Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. I promised you we'd come back to it. This is part seven of my employee training series we were, where we are tracking the employee training for an organization. It could be for what you know certifications or classes they have to take, all that good stuff. If you haven't watched parts one through six, go watch those first. You'll find links down below in the description and then come on back when you're done. Alrighty, we're back. And this is one of those things, when I do these series, these multi-part series, it's nice to do a bunch of them in a row because then I don't have to stop and go back and figure out where I left off and all that stuff. And when I did parts one through six, right after that, I took a break and I, I went out of town for a week. And um, so today I had to spend some time and review what I did and go over my notes and where are we today and figure all that stuff out. So. When I promise I'm going to get back to something, I always get back to it eventually. Today, we're going to work on this thing down here. All right, we're going to do it so that when the user actually completes an in-progress piece of training, we fill in the dates, right? We got some dates in here that we got to fill in, right? The completed and the expiration date. We want to put some controls in here so that they just can't do anything willy-nilly, right? How much control you put in here is up to you. All right, that's up. That's there's lots of you can either lock it down a lot so that they have to follow the rules, or you can give your users the discretion to do what they want. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this combo box because I don't want them just coming in here and doing that. Because there are some dates that I want to set when it was completed and when does it expire if it has an expiration date, right? Yes, you can do that from here with some VB code, right? You can issue an SQL statement in the background. You can run an update query. You can, there's all kinds of things you can do, but I want to basically force the user to have to open up this form to do that kind of stuff. It's, it's easier if you can control these kinds of things from one place instead of having multiple places where they can make changes, right? One thing I, I want you to notice first is notice this little guy here, all right? That means this record's locked. You can't do anything with it. Why? Because I was in here and I made a, uh, some kind of an edit, right? I changed this. So now this record is dirty, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is before we open up this form, I wanna do a refresh here. All right, so design view. I'm gonna go to this course ID combo box. See what I just did there? You gotta click on it twice, right? Once clicks on the sub form, second time clicks on that combo box. It's kind of tricky. Go into the on double click event. That'll open up your VB editor. Where'd you go? There you are. Hold on, let me resize. The thing is, after I'm after I don't record a video for a while, because I, I I make a lot of you know I work on my own database a lot too, and so I move this window to a different screen. So right here, very simple. Me dot refresh. It's the same thing you have to do when you open a report, because if you open a report and your form's dirty, the report's going to have bad information, right? I covered that in my invoicing video. All right, so that takes care of that problem. All right, next thing is I want to lock this guy. Let me move this over out of the way. I want to lock this guy so the user can't change it here. And that's just simply go to the data tab and go locked is yes. If you want to lock this one, that's on your own. That's up to you. You can lock this too. Um, I'm keeping a list of little things that I'm going to put in an extended cut. And I'm going to cover that in an extended cut. All right. So this will lock if this says completed. Okay. Um, all right. So now save it, close it, close it. If you open this up again, you'll notice that you can't change this here. You can make this gray if you want to. But in order to change that, the user's got to come into here. And in here is where we'll control what happens. All right, when these things change. So what is the change? Well, let's assume this goes, let's see, let's get this started in, in, in progress, right? All right, here's the enrollment date, the deadline. What I want the first thing to do is when this changes, when the user changes this from in progress to completed, right? I want to set the completion date. And then I want to look up the expiration date. Now, how do we find the expiration date? Well, this course, if you go to the course table, every course has this guy, expiration num years. If it's a zero, this doesn't expire. Once you get the training, right? Like your new hire training, once you're, high, once you're on board, you're good. It doesn't expire. But if it's got a number in here, that means you have to renew it on a regular basis. Let's make the accounting stuff here, AC 101, 2, and 3. Let's make those so they expire. All right, where are we at here? All right, let's do uh, six months, one year, and two years. All right, for AC 101, 2, and 3. Okay? Okay. Save changes, yes. 
and let's go back over here let's add notice over here uh we got this he needs to add that too so we'll add that okay and we'll put these all in progress oh can't change it from here see that's good let's open it up in progress open it up in progress okay so he's got those three things in progress all right so we just finished ac 101 let's open it up and now I'm going to come in here and change this to completed. Now, at this point, when this thing is changed, we want it to trigger an after update event that updates the completed and updates the expiration date, right? So design view, we're going to go to the status ID and we're going to look for your after update event right here. Dot, 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 right there. Okay, now the statuses are in the status table. In progress, completed, failed, and expired. Okay, those are their IDs. Sometimes it's helpful to take this and put this in notepad so you can see it. So it's sitting right next to you as you're working, right? All right, there we go. I dropped them in the notepad. All right, I'm just gonna slide them off the screen here. I'm gonna keep my eye on them, but I do that a lot. Or you can use paint and take a little screen cap. Sometimes I do that with design view, just so I can see the list of stuff that I'm working with, right? Okay, so if they set the status combo to two, which is completed, right if status combo equals two then we'll mark that as completed what are we going to do well completed date equals today's date that's the default right you can change it like if you're you know if, if they if they reported this last monday you could put in last monday was a completed date because that might make a difference for the expiration date okay now how do i get the expiration date well we're going to have to use d lookup and grab it from the table right it's in the course table Oops, wrong one, not the contact table, the course table, right? So we got the course ID, which is the course combo here. And then we're looking for, what are we looking for? We're looking for the field expiration num years. Okay, so now we can come in here. We need a variable to put it in. So I'm going to dim expiration num years as a long. Actually, this is a long integer. This should be a double, right? Because it can be a, a 0.5. Expiration num years as a double. I'm just so used to making them longs. Okay, so expiration num years equals D lookup expiration num years from the course table where the course ID equals close your quotes and put course combo in there. Okay. Now, there is the possibility that someone didn't fill that value in, so we might want to enclose this inside of NZ, null to zero, and make that a zero. Okay? Now I know the expiration num years, and I can say if expiration num years is zero, then it doesn't expire, right? So expiration date equals null. Otherwise, expiration date equals I want to add that number of years onto the completed date, right? So it's going to be date add, use the date add function. Now years is not Y, it's Y, 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 Y. That's a common mistake a lot of people make. Single Y is day of the year. It's a number from 1 to 365 or 366 in a leap year, right? Y, 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 Y is whole years, okay? What is the number of years we're adding? Well, that's the expiration num years that we just looked up, comma, completed date. That's the date we're adding to. And if, and if. Okay, so that's what happens if they change it to completed. Let's save it and test it. All right, let's save it, close it, close it, open it, and let's set it to completed. And it's not working. What happened? We got this date right. We got that date right. Um, okay, what's, I don't, I don't know why that wouldn't work. Let's see if we can figure this out. Well, let's try, let's try a different class. Let's try AC 102. All right, let's go back to in progress and then completed and it worked. Okay, that did the year. Let's try AC 103. In progress, back to completed and I got my two years. Okay. Um, let's see, why is AC 101 not working? Let's try it again. Ready, go there and then go back and nope. It didn't work. Why is that? Well, welcome to another one of my problems with access. Sammy, this is a good one for the list. If we go back into here, here's date add, right? Now, if you look at the parameters, that expiration number says as double, right? That means you should be able to send a double 
meaning a number with a decimal value, into date add. I should be able to add half a year. But you know what? You can't. That actually only works with whole numbers. So the access team, you guys need to change that number as double to either number as long or number as integer or something. Doubles don't work. So Sammy, add this to the list, okay? So what we're gonna have to do is, I think the easiest way to handle this is to convert that expiration num years to months. Now, we could go back to the table and make that months if you want to, or we could just do a little math right here, right? We can say num, or we'll just make it expiration num months as a long. And then after we look this guy up, we can say expiration num months equals expiration num years times 12, right? So if this is a one, it's gonna give me 12. If it's a 0 0.5, it's gonna give me six, right? And now we can come down here and we can add months and make it expiration num months. Okay, save it, debug compile, come back out here and let's try it again. Access 102, this should be a full year. Yep, and access, access, accounting 101. Let's go complete it and there we go, there's our six months. So that's the fix for that. So yeah, I left that in here intentionally because this has happened to me before. I'm like, why can't I add a fractional year or even a fractional, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, so that's if they pick completed. Well, what if they change it to in progress or expired or any other status as well? Yeah, we'll talk about that tomorrow. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Or if you remember, you can watch it right now because I'm going to record a couple more of these today. So uh, I'll do at least two or three of them. All right. And of course, if you need extra training on any of the stuff that I covered today, the after update event, DLOOKUP, NZ, DATE, ADD, all of those, I have separate videos for those on my website. I'll put links down below in the links section. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part eight. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist and he not only offers access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming 
As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.